if you will, join with me in looking at just a few of our announcements this morning. There's quite a bit going on in the next few weeks, so I would invite you to definitely look through your bulletin at all of those things, but I will highlight uh, just a couple of things. Uh, this week, our church conference will be Wednesday night, so don't forget that. This coming Thursday at the Pregnancy Resource Center, there will be an open house from 4 to 7 p.m., so make that if you can, as well as don't forget our October Mission Project, details of which you can find in the, the bulletin. And also, we are planning on uh, giving out candy at the City of Somerville Halloween Walk on Halloween night, Monday, October 31st. So we need lots and lots of candy. Uh, so you've got a couple of weeks to get that in. So uh, go to the store, buy lots of candy. Don't eat it all, but bring it here. And uh, we will uh, be there to give that out to the kids of our community, uh, as well as let them know what, we're, what God is doing here at Horizon as we hand that candy out. And again, make sure you take some time to, to look through your bulletin. Uh, there's a, a good... Uh, article on CBF celebrating 25 years uh, in the back of your bulletin as well. Make sure you pay attention to that because it's CBF's anniversary as well. You'll hear more about that this morning as well. But thank you. May we worship together. For our next song, we're going to be doing uh, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder. Um, I guess this is on. And um, later, the preacher is going to be reading some scripture about Jacob, which this happened, obviously, before Jacob wrestled with God. But I just want you to think about Jacob and his place in, in our church life.
invite our children to come forward for our children's moment this morning. I'm going to ask you kiddos if you'll come sit right here on these couple of pews. And I'll stand up this morning. So today is a special day in the life of our church. What is it? We get to eat after church. <laughs> Amen. Kids know what it's all about, right? Well, it's called our anniversary. Who of you knows what an anniversary is? When you get married? That's one reason for an anniversary. To celebrate a day that something special is going on or to remember a special event like getting married or, in our case, when our church began. And that's a very important time to stop and think about how God has blessed our church. And this year makes 24 years that our church has been following God and worshiping together as a church family. In today's Bible story we're going to read in just a minute is about Jacob. And it's a really cool story where Jacob wrestles with an angel and literally wrestles with an angel. It sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? Yeah. But he wrestles with God. And after this incident, Jacob comes away with a new perspective. He wrestles with God to secure a blessing, to secure his future. And wrestling with God changes Jacob. And Horizon coming to be involved a lot of wrestling with God and asking tough questions and really seeking where God wanted our church family to go and to be. And it's something that we still do. We wrestle with God about what our future looks like and what God wants us to do for the next 24 years. So it's always important to wrestle with God and to seek out what God wants us to do in our life. And today we celebrate the anniversary of those who were brave, and willing to, to wrestle with God and seek God's will and give us our wonderful church family. And we pray that we continue to do that. Let's pray. And God, we thank you for this wonderful anniversary. We thank you for your calling to wrestle with you, to wrestle through issues, to ask the tough questions so that we might faithfully seek your will in all that we do. God, we thank you for how you have blessed our church family for 24 years, and we pray for those blessings to continue for many, many more. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for this special anniversary Sunday is Genesis 32 verses 22 through 31. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he pressed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Today we celebrate 24 years of ministry here at Horizon and 25 years of the ministry of the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. What a special day that is indeed. But when we celebrate these things, what is it exactly that we are celebrating? Are we celebrating survival when so many new churches don't make it? 
Are we celebrating success that 24 years later we've had fruitful ministry in our community and grown together as a fellowship? Are we celebrating both? The fact that not only have we survived, but you and we have been successful in our ministries. Or is it something even more than that? I think that we are celebrating 24, 25 years of wrestling with God. In our text, we saw Jacob wrestle with the angel in the darkness of night. And he comes away changed. A direct encounter with God can do that to you. Especially when it's a wrestling match. Some 24, 25 years ago, Baptists were wrestling with God about what direction they should go. Their long-standing convictions, theologies, and doctrines were being challenged. There was a group of folks who were proclaiming that their way was the only way to believe. And in a sense, they were putting themselves above our individual freedom to interpret Scripture and follow Christ as we felt led. And through their own wrestling with God, both on a national level as well as right here in Somerville, Baptists took up the challenge to wrestle with God, to wrestle with man, fellow Baptists, to seek out what God's direction might be. And from those wrestling matches, a couple of things came into being. First, the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. A group of Baptists from all over who came together to declare that there was a different way to be Baptist. But this different way was in fact historically more Baptist. And they developed a vision for what it would mean to be a fellowship. A group of Baptist Christians devoted to following the way of Christ. And along that same time, there was a group of devoted Baptists here in Somerville, Georgia. Who were having their own wrestling match. As they developed a vision for being part of that movement. As CBF was born, Horizon was born not long after. And the fruit of that wrestling is what we celebrate today. The brave men and women who sought to wrestle with God, to stand bold in the face of opposition, and become who they were called to be. For that we are thankful. For that we celebrate. And in just a little bit you'll get to hear from some of our charter members about their own experience wrestling with God and bringing horizon into being. But for now, I invite you to join with me in reading the responsive reading that you will find in your bulletin. It's a litany of celebration compiled by CBF Executive Coordinator Susie Painter as we celebrate the anniversary of our movement. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. And in our beginning, there was a sense of wonder at what was happening. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. 
But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Being reduced to zero, starting completely over, was the price of the call to be a missionary, saying goodbye to family and friends, giving away possessions and privilege, also means losing a part of yourself, your identity. It means becoming a new person, an immigrant. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. We find ourselves sometimes in places we did not choose, but we know we are right where we need to be. So I will continue to love, even when it is hard, because I know that grace and freedom abound through love. CBS has taken me to amazing places and has led me to face some of the most difficult situations in my life. The journey is long and hard and worth every step. Please stand for our first hymn, number 677, When We Are Tested. I have journeyed through the long 
long dark night out on the open sea by faith alone sight unknown And yet his eyes watching me The anchor holds Though the ship is battered The anchor holds Though the sails are torn I have fallen on my knees As I face the raging seas The anchor holds In spite of the storm I've had vision And I've had dreams I've even held them In my hand In my hand But I never knew They could slip right through Like they were only grains of sand The anchor holds Though the ship is battered The anchor holds Though the sails are torn I have fallen As I face the raging seas, the anchor holds in spite of the storm. I have been young, but I'm older now, and there has been eyes have seen But it was in the night through the storms of my life Oh, that's where God proved His love for me The anchor holds Though the ship is battered, the anchor holds, though the sails are torn, I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas, the anchor holds. Spite of the storm, yes, I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas. The anchor holds in spite of the storm. The anchor.
I'm completely out of my comfort zone, but it's truly a privilege to be. Um, you can see Yubi has this fabulous voice, and he was with us from the beginning. On a Wednesday night a lifetime ago, I realized, I don't know if I'm... I realized I could no longer be a part of the church I had grown up in. I was raising my family in, and David had been ordained it. I haven't cried one time. <laughs> we had many friends in that church. However, um, there became a strange phenomenon, and it was... It, was, it crept up on me, and I became aware of that something was going on when we went to the Georgia Baptist Convention. And I learned that I, who felt like I was conservative in spite of the being a wild woman, or a moderate, that's why you go, uh, <laughs> uh, there was something wrong with being moderate. And I really didn't understand it at the time. Um, we had a, a new minister who came to our church, and he he embraced the new direction I think that the Southern Baptist Convention was was having with the idea that the preacher was in charge, that the preacher made the decisions, and that women had no place in leadership. Now look around, how many churches would survive without women leaders? That's not going to happen. But he, um, he came with a very, very firm feeling for these things, and, and it became apparent. And on a Wednesday night when, when we were having a lot of discussions about what was going to happen in the church, I realized I couldn't stay there anymore. Uh, it was just in the middle of the, the discussion, and I got up and I left. My heart was broken that evening when I walked out of the church. Um, I felt like everything I'd ever felt was gone. <laughs> and uh, for days, I was a rudderless soul. I talked with David, and we were despondent together. Many people from other churches invited us to join with them. But there's just something about being a Baptist. Other Baptist churches invited us, but there was the, the feelings that were coming forth from the Southern Baptist Convention. And um, I, I felt like it was leaving me. One day uh, at a countywide teachers meeting, I talked to Peggy Moorhead about what we could do. Peggy was a person for whom I had great respect. We talked for a while, but, and she said, well, if you ever get um, serious about forming a church, I know where we can meet. A few days later, I was out just driving and thinking, and I ended up at Robert and Helen Floyd's house. We talked and decided we need to call a meeting of like-minded people to see if we could make a good plan. We got on the phone and called people we felt were thinking like we were. Later in the week, we had a very good meeting with these people at the Floyd's house, and um, Peggy made arrangements for for us to use the method, mes, mes, ma, hmm, mes, mes, Macedonia. There you go, Macedonia Methodist Church in Dry Valley. So we all got on the phone and got these people to decide that. We were going to meet together, and so on the weekend of July 4th, we, we had our first service in that church. We couldn't wait because it was a holiday weekend. It was much more important than a holiday weekend. We did more calling and had our service at the little church. We had a very cr good crowd of over 50 people. And there was nothing ordinary about that crowd of people. Um, the people who were there were people like, Peggy and O.G. Moorhead, Robert and Helen Floyd, 
Oh, golly, I'll leave out names. I, I mean, there was nothing ordinary. These were people who could pick up and take off. Um, they needed very little leadership. They just needed a place and a time. Each person there brought a firm faith and experience. Everyone uh, took part in the way we needed to go, and we went to church. No more sadness. There, I was not sad again. I've never looked back. I've never been sorrowful. And, and I think, as, as the scripture says, joy comes in the morning. We came part, we became sort of famous somehow. We were written up in the new little um, booklet that was done for uh, CBS. And, and we became famous that way because we were starting a new church. We had people who were exceptional in music. There were those who were good with finances, those who were good with ministry to the needs of people, those who would teach classes. And once a month, we had a fellowship with a meal, which meant we could bond together in fun and fellowship. We had a visit from a man named Cecil Sherman who helped inspire us and confirm our commitment to our church and for the direction we wanted for our fellowship. But we had to move from the wonderful little Macedonia church because winter was coming and there was no heat in the building. So the Seventh-day Adventists let us use their building on Sunday because they needed it on Saturday. After that, we moved to the, the Somerville Presbyterian Church. Our Jenny was married in that church, a Baptist girl marrying a Methodist fellow in a Presbyterian church. It, it was wonderful. Then along came a man named Jimmy Lewis, and our church meeting place changed quickly. Just look around at what happened. We've been so blessed with members and a beautiful place of worship. I will never forget the day I came around the curve to this property for the first time with all those wonderful people who had given their time to come and begin the building of our new church. Such a thrill it was. A number of us have nails up here in the pulpit, on, in the floor underneath this carpet. We had services here even before the place was finished. We would get our folding chairs and come and meet and rejoice and have a great time together. We had great preachers from the beginning. We had Steve Sheely, who was a professor at Shorter College. We had Roger McDonald, who came directly out of retirement to lead us. We've had Dan Whitaker, Jerry Mahan, John Wyatt, and now we have John Paul Harris. God has watched over us for sure. I want to call some of the names of the members who were the bedrock of our church, who have gone on to the Father's house. I don't want them to be forgotten. There's Ferris Bagley, who was in her 90s, and she was ready to go. I mean, she was ready. She was with us and, and ready. There was Wright and Marie Wheeler, and they were so fun. They were sweet and energetic and, and a lot of fun to have around. There was Mary Sally, who was always willing to help as she could. There was J.B. Red and, and Mavis. Sally Collette, Sally loved decorating and making sure everything was pretty and she was just always at work with the church. Tom and Susie Mahaffey, they were, they were spiritual giants in our church. Leonard and Bessie Scoggins, now Bessie was cooking and she made our first communion cloth and there was Leonard and his bicycle, now these people were old. There was Leonard riding his bicycle and, and, um, and taking um, Coke cans and, and uh, having them crushed to sell to get money to build our church. Erwin, Thomas, and Martha. Uh, Maxine Palmer. Maxine was, was such a giving and wondrous person. <clears throat> she even got an award. 
for vol being a volunteer. <clears throat> Looks like I'm having a Hillary moment. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> there was Joe Gannon, Joe Gannon and Ruby Gannon, and Joe had quite a colorful background. I mean, he was so much fun. And Ruby, our precious Ruby, y'all all remember our precious Ruby. Some of you may not remember some of the other people because they haven't been around in quite a while. And then there was Kay Casey. Kay was always such a giving and loving person for our church. And Charles Cook, who recently died, they uh, went on uh, from our church. They sold their property and moved to a place where they felt like they could, they didn't have to manage a yard and all that sort of thing. But uh, Charles helped with, with accounts and stuff of that nature. But we, it was no ordinary group of people God put together for this church. And I think it's quite obvious because we have, we have such a blessing here and, and we've had such great leaders. I, I, I think I probably left something for AG. Did I leave something for you? <laughs> Thank you, Sue. As we celebrate 24 years in this church that we love, it brings forth a lot of memories, a lot of memories that we'll take with us as long as we live. Some sad times, as Sue mentioned, but by and large, most of them were wonderful times that we came together. The question has often been asked, why and how did Horizon Baptist Fellowship come to be? Well, let me answer that quite, both of those questions. First of all, why? Why did we need a new church? In the late 1970s, the Southern Baptist Convention, under new leadership, began to change their theology. They began to change their religious philosophies in such areas as putting a lot of emphasis on women not serving in leadership positions in the church, women not teaching men, <clears throat> women certainly not serving as deacons, the pastor to be the sole authority of the church. Any question comes up, the pastor would decide. The Baptist faith and message statement that we all grew up knowing was reworded to coincide with the philosophy of the Southern Baptist Convention. And you know, we thought, and we wrestled with this, and we thought, this is not where we want to be. This is not where we want to raise our children, our grandchildren. We wanted a place where we could worship, where anyone who wanted to serve would have a place of service, regardless of gender. So what happened? Some 20 plus members walked away. And we wrestled with that for some time. What do we do? We didn't know how to go about forming a church. We didn't know what first step to take. We had no idea what challenges were gonna be ahead of us, but we knew one thing, that God was with us from day one. So we started on that journey. And it was early in that journey that we met a man that Sue mentioned, Cecil Sherman. Dr. Sherman had just been appointed coordinator of the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship, headquarters in Atlanta. He came and met with us out at Camp Hamby on a Saturday, spent about four hours with us, listened to our story, gave us encouragement, told us what we needed to do. And one thing he said that day, I'll always remember, don't let your anger get to you. It'll make you mean. And I don't think we were angry with anybody, but we were disappointed. So after we talked with Dr. Sherman, he became a really part of our get together. He was with us in spirit, and we talked to him quite often. <laughs> and after we finished this building, Dr. Sherman came every year on our anniversary for several years until his wife's health prohibited him coming. So after Camp Hamby, we knew that we had to find a place that had heat. So as Sue mentioned, the Seventh-day Adventists on, Be on Bella Avenue opened their doors to us on Sunday because they didn't use their facility on Sunday. They met on Saturday. And it was here at that church that we had our first pastor. Dr. Stephen Seeley was a professor of religion at Shorter. 
I remember the first Baptist church in Rome, which happened to be the first church to openly support us. They gave us a piano. They gave us hymn books, which we had none of. And they gave us moral support. And they were there along with Dr. Seeley to help us organize and have our charter service. It was about the 1st of October that Dr. Seeley told us that you're not going to get anywhere with this church until you have someone full-time here on the scene. And that the last Sunday in October would be his last Sunday. Well, that was sort of a shock to us. But we had heard, we knew Roger McDonald, he'd been here before, and we heard that Roger had retired from Garland First Baptist Church, so we got in touch with Roger. And Roger said that he and Dorothy had been following our progress and were real interested in what we were doing. And we said, Roger, we need somebody to come and help us get started. And he said, well, let me talk to Dorothy and figure out what you could pay me and it was very, very little, I'm sorry to say. We did furnish him a three-room apartment. But Roger came, and he came to stay a few months and wound up staying 18 years. And we bought this property and were cleaning off the lot. Baptist Today, which was a newsletter from the Corporate Baptist Fellowship, came and did a story on our church, took pictures. Jimmy Lewis, who was pastor of the First Baptist Church in Morrow, saw that article in the Baptist Today newsletter. And he called Roger and he said, I want to help you build that church. And, and Jimmy came and met with us several times. And he organized people all over the state of Georgia to come and help us build this facility. We laid the foundation. He brought a group from his church and from the greater Atlanta area came to do the framing. The First Baptist Church in Tekoa sent a group of men for several weeks to do the drywall, installing the sheetrock, and an untold number of people contributed to what we have today. And you know, God has blessed this congregation in many, many ways. There are so many people who gave so much that we can have what we have today. And every time I come into this sanctuary for worship, I feel God's presence. I thank God was with us all the way. He's still with us today. And I really believe that our church is just on the forefront of really breaking loose. And I hope that we will continue to be a beacon in this community, a beacon of love for each other, a beacon for the love of Jesus Christ, that we may care for the gospel at our Rising Baptist Fellowship. Happy anniversary. Thank you, OG and Sue. We really appreciate your insight and dedication through these years. Our next hymn is God, Our Father, You Have Led Us, hymn number 37.
let us pray. 24 years ago, you spoke to the heart of a small group of believers, God. They listened to your still small voice, and more importantly, they followed and obeyed you. Now, 24 years later, a few have become many. Lives have been changed, and people have found a place to worship and serve you. God, as we continue to grow, I pray that we listen to your voice, and more importantly, we follow it. We all pray that you will continue to bless and grow this fellowship of believers so that we may help others. Now bless this offering, God, and use it for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand for our doxology.
comfortable after hearing that roll call of saints and all those who've had a part in the history of Horizon up to this point. I can't help but wonder why am I here. Um, But I'm here nonetheless, and I look forward to our future together. And I can't help but stop and think about what that future is going to look like. Without doubt, there will be challenges to overcome. There will be questions to answer, tough decisions to be made. And we will time and time again find ourselves wrestling with God. But I have no doubt that a fellowship that has come this far has a bright future. I'm proud of our church's commitment to CBF and I'm proud of CBF's commitment to the local church. And I look forward to many years of ministry together as we move forward. And I hope today that as we celebrate these 24 years of ministry, that you will double down on your commitment to this church and what you can do to ensure a bright future together. I look forward to being a part of that. And may we be a people who aren't afraid to wrestle with where we are headed, but at the same time be willing to stand together until we get there. So now, if you will, join with me. For the love of Christ compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all. It was Christ's love for all the world that compelled me. At the plenary session, I hope to my overflowing joy, and I as a symbol. Let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. We can use our voices to proclaim the gospel truth of transformation, reconciliation, and redemption. Perhaps the most Do we need letters of introduction to and from each other? No, you are all the letter we need, a letter written on our heart. It is plain that you are a letter that has come from Christ, a letter with the Spirit of the living God, written not on stone tablets, but on the pages of the human heart. Please stand for our hymn of invitation, number 250, stanzas 1, 2, and 3. Blessed God, we are thankful for 24 years together. Lord, we pray for continued 
fruitful ministry well into the future. We thank you for your blessings. We pray for your guidance. Lord, as we prepare to celebrate around the table, we pray that you would bless the food, that you would bless us with strength and courage and boldness to go forth following the path that you have for us. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.